So the recording has started. So hi, Sammy. Welcome to Ashes Corner User Group. Thank uh, you. We are looking forward to hearing you talk about chatbots. Uh, the All recording right. has started, so you're welcome to start sharing. Okay, I'll share my screen. All right, just a... Uh, oh, that's not the purpose. Uh, All right, a little bit more about myself first. Uh, I'm a managing partner, senior consultant at Arinti, which is a Belgian-based firm who is specialized in the Microsoft AI stack from building machine learning models up to uh, building chatbots. We give trainings to customers and uh, also work with human humanoid robotics. Uh, since the 1st of April, it's not a joke, the 1st of April, I became a Microsoft AI MVP. Um, so I'm very glad also with that. And I guess that's mostly because of the community work I do. Uh, I'm a core member at Data Minds, uh, which is the Microsoft Data Platform community here in Belgium. And then I'm also part of the Global AI Community Team, uh, which organizes the on the higher level the AI on tour also. And a little part underneath the Global AI Community, we have the Global AI Community Channel on YouTube, uh, where I. Uh, organized weekly in AI talks live uh, where we talk to one person and uh, we discuss a certain topic for 30 minutes to 40 minutes people can ask questions so every week live on uh, on YouTube so for sure look us up my Twitter handle you can see just underneath my pictures so and if you have any pictures uh, any questions don't hesitate to ask So, uh, okay, what are we going to discuss today? Well, we're going to go a little bit in history of what a chatbot is and what the first chatbot was. Uh, we'll discuss some tools that are there and then we'll discuss three different ways of uh, building a chatbot and we'll add an extra flavor. So we'll see on later on what that extra one is. And of course, I think it's very important also to discuss a bit pricing uh, to compare them with each other and also which type uh, is better. Well, not better, but do you need to use in which use case? All right, a chatbot, what are they? Well, actually, a chatbot is just an app like any other app, like a, a mobile app or a web app or uh, just a Windows application. But the difference with it is that the input is totally different. Um, in my example here, I have two people who are conversing to each other and the guy says, okay, I want a bike. Okay, a bike. But then again, in a bike, you have different types of bikes and you can have a bike for a child. You can have a racing bike. You can have a mountain bike. You can have a, a, one of those bicycles where you can sit with two, with two behind each other. Now, not only the input is different, um, but also the UX, uh, where in other applications you can go very graphical or you can, uh, your UX training it specifically to your, the usage of your, cons of your customers. Now, with a bot, yeah, your UX is always somehow the same. You can change certain things and I will demo that also later on, but your input will always be text and the output should be text also, except when we're building a voice bot, then it's of course, we cannot show anything visual, but it's only on what is being said through a sound. Now, bots on itself are not new at all. The, the first chatbot was built in the 60s already, and it was called Eliza, and that was a project by uh, Professor Joseph Weizenbaum. He was a professor at MIT and it was built to mimic human conversations and it tried to match words and in, in your message to a list of possible scripted resources. So very basic, but actually it had a very big impact on how NLP is working at the moment. And the funny thing is he attended that Eliza would be caricaturing uh, human conversations 
but since it was built a bit as a, a psychologist, people were actually really telling their problems to Eliza. Now, at that time in the 60s, uh, experts declared that chatbots would be indisguisable anymore from humans which, within a small number of years. Well, we're from the 60s, that's uh, 40, 60 years later now. We can still figure out when we're talking to a bot or when we're talking to a human. Why is that? Well, if we think about the Turing test, which is a test that will check if a computer is, can be recognized from a human, it's, it need, the computer needs to have the capabilities of thinking like a human. And a chatbot is most of the times trained to specific topics or to fix certain problems. Now, to have uh, the capabilities of thinking like a, like a human, well, then you need to have all the knowledge in the world. Well, not everything, but at least a, a big part of it. And that's some kind of a general AI. And we're not there yet. Now, to start with the real building a chatbot, there are different tools that can be used. Um, we'll discuss a couple of tools first, and then we'll go into the bots. Now, a very important one, to my opinion, and that is really easy to use, is a Q&A maker. And I'll start off with a, with a question. What company of Elon Musk makes flamethrowers? Who knows the answer on that? You can say it in chat. How can I go? Not the flamethrower, no. So the company of Elon Musk that makes flamethrowers is called the Boring Company. And as many websites, the Boring Company actually doesn't really have such an interesting website. Well, how it's built. Just have a look. Now, if you go to the website of the Boring Company, as many different websites, it has an FAQ page. And if you open the FAQ page, yeah, what do you see? Oh, sorry, you just see questions, answers, questions, answers, and so on. Now, we would like to change that and have it in a more uh, dynamic way to question that list. So what we do, we copy the link of the boring company. And we go to qnamaker.ai. Now, at qnamaker.ni, we just set what Azure tenants were using, uh, subscriptions, and so on, and what language the, the, the text will be. So we give the, a name to our knowledge base that we are creating, where all the questions and answers are, and we copy the URL, paste it into the population. Now, at this moment, the data is extracted from Q&A Maker, and if we give it a second, And we will have oh, what's going on? Okay, and we have a list of all the questions and answers that are on the FAQ page. So we see the first one is just an introduction, and that one we will remove. So then we say save and train. So all the data is getting analyzed and figured out how it can be used as a as a chatbot. And now we can immediately say test. So we can say um, what about tunnels, for example? This is, yeah, you just click, type it. What about tunnels? And we get the answer exactly to what has been given. Now, if we click on exp, uh, inspect, we also get a confidence score. Um, based on this data that we have, we can add extra features, um, like adding extra uh, extra alternative phrasings and so onwards. Now, this is just a small bit of what Q&A does. Um, there's many more uh, features within Q&A Maker. We go back. Okay, so Q&A Maker on itself is a no-code service. Uh, as you saw, it's all being done visual. Even adding questions can still be done within that portal. It has a way of automatic extraction. As we saw, it took out the FAQ list from the website of the Boring Company. 
and it, you can also configure multi-turn conversations. What does that mean? Well, you will not always have question and then answer. You might have a question, for example, uh, while well, we build a, a chatbot for a, a city here in Belgium, and one of the questions was like, I am looking for a school. Well, yeah, you have many different kinds of schools, so we need to ask extra questions, and these are the multi-turn conversations. So after asking one question, the, the chatbot might ask, okay, uh, what kind of school are you looking for? Is it a, a music school? Is it a sports school? Is it university? Is it a secondary, primary, and so on? And you can do that many steps underneath each other to get to the correct answer. Now, another interesting feature is active learning, where active learning, when, for example, a person uh, asks a question, but you have two questions that are very close to each other in, in scoring, then it will show the both questions and ask the user, OK, what question did you actually really mean? So based on the input of the user, it will give, it will train the, the bot in the back end, while well, the Q&A maker service in the back end. Scaling is also no issue. Q&A maker works uh, in the back on uh, Azure search with some extra items and, um, and an app service. So that you can scale as much as you want. And you can go from a free tire all the way to hundreds of euros per month. It supports a big wide group of languages. Well, I've said here now Dutch included because here yeah, in Belgium we speak Dutch. Now, Q&A Maker, as I said, is a very important tool, but even a more important one is Louis. What does Louis do? Well, when you say, for example, I want to book a flight to your chatbot, well, then it needs to recognize what you want to do. And in this case, it's book a flight. You could as well have said, uh, I want to order a pizza, but then it needs to go to a totally different dialogue of questions and answers that need to be given. So by sending this uh, sentence that the user gave to Lewis or the language understanding service of Microsoft, it will recognize he needs the intense book of flight. Now, this is is quite by default. This you could do, for example, with regex also. Uh, what since regex regex is also some kind of uh, NLP. Now we can make it more difficult and say, I want to book a flight to JFK. Well, with this, Lewis will return. Okay, the per the person wants to book a flight, and it wants to go to the airport JFK. So we have an intent book a flight, and we have an entity which is JFK. Since we get from Lewis back this entity already, we don't need to ask the user, okay, and where do you want to go to? Because the user already said so. And that makes your bot make, make it look more human and, and it's for your users also more user friendly. Because how irritating is it that you need to reply uh, yourself? Now, we have entities and we can have also a second entity that is, for example, within the same uh, type. Uh, we, we want to book a flight from Brussels to JFK. We have two times it's an airport, but now in this case we can say Brussels is the from airport and JFK is a to airport and this can be combined. So when the user is asking that we immediately have these two locations. Now we can also mix up different entities and so here I want to book a flight tomorrow to Seattle. Uh, I wish I could do. Um, here it will recognize tomorrow in this part and also give this back. Now, how does this look within uh, the Lewis portal? I will go to Lewis. Okay, let's just create a new app, a new app for conversation. We'll call it Book Flight. We'll keep the English culture. I will click done. Just, I'm not going to go through the wizard right now. And uh, we want to create a new intent. So in this case, uh, book flight. But I could as well add here order pizza. Now, if you go to book flight, we need to give Lewis some example data that he can train on. So I want to book a flight. 
I'm just going to use the same examples. And this, we don't need to put any entities because we just have the intents. I want to book uh, a flight to JFK or let's say to something else. Um, to to the airport bio, it's uh, it's in Spain. <laughs> now we have this one and now we have the feature to click on the words and say to which entity it belongs. So in this case, airport, airport doesn't exist yet in the current application, so we can create a new entity. There you have two differences. You have a machine learned uh, entities, so you are training it by adding more utterances, or you can have a list where in a list you will just have, as it says, a list of different words and synonyms that can be linked to it. So you could, for example, add, in this case, a list of all the airports in the world. So now I'll choose machine learning, create. <clears throat> now, to show also the tomorrow, I want to book a flight tomorrow to uh, up, up, up. AMS. Let's go to Amsterdam. Now we have tomorrow here, but instead of creating our own uh, entity, we can say we want to use a pre-built entity. <clears throat> and here we can choose daytime. So what will this do? It will recognize tomorrow and will convert it for us into a full date that we can use into the logic of our application. And on AMS, we can just still say it's airport. So within entities now, we have our airport and our daytime. And in airports, we can also uh, generate our roles. So we can add here a to and a, a from, for example. And now that can also be added into our intents, uh, entities. OK, so we had Q&A maker for purely questions and answers. We had Louis for actually making our chatbot smart by recognizing what persons are saying. Um, as I said, a chatbot is not always by text, but could be also by voice enabled. And for that, I have a small video which shows the demo. To Boston, both direct and connecting that depart Pittsburgh after 7 p.m. QX. How tall was the Baryonyx dinosaur? This example of the Baryonyx dinosaur, uh, well, I find this a very interesting one um, because you could use this, for example, in a, in a medical way also. You have a lot of difficult medical terms. Uh, these are not always trained within the, the standard uh, text to speech, uh, speech to text uh, engines. Now Microsoft has a has a, a service it's called Custom Vision, where you can train uh, specific words uh, so it can be understood better. In the first example, we could hear uh, background noise uh, of a, of an airport. Also, that can be filtered out through custom uh, custom sound, yeah, custom speech. Sorry. Boston. Now, let's start to actually building the chatbots. Uh, we saw the three tools. Uh, and the first one, and actually the oldest one, is Bot Framework SDK, a, a library to build chatbots. If we go to the, the, the description what Microsoft gives, there's a, actually a couple of interesting uh, elements. It has a comprehensive, comprehensive experience easily model and build sophisticated conversations. You can use your favorite programming language. You have a free form, uh, guided interaction, simple text com or complete re complex rich, ca rich cards, and you can interact with natural language uh, and Q&A, for example. Now, <clears throat> as I said, Bot Framework SDK um, is a tool that already exists for a while. Um, well, my slide says from the year 206, but actually that's the year 2016. Uh, it has a lot of new commits. 
uh, had, a lot, had a lot of commits and contributions since it's an, an open source project. And you can write uh, your chatbots in different languages from C Sharp to Java, JavaScript and Python. Um, and we're going now today live with, I thought it was 4.9. So version 4.9. I cannot recall exactly what uh, the new features are within. But the nice thing is both framework SDK is very open, which also means interaction or integration with different uh, chatting tools are possible. Now, here we have a list of a lot of items. Eh? Everything that you see with an A is the ones that are by default integrated within uh, Microsoft. and. Am I saying by default integrated? It means it's also very easy to use it. Now, within the Azure portal, you have a component. It's called the bot registration service, where you say where your bot is uh, link based. Uh, the bot framework SDK is actually an API that you build. So you give the URL of that bot to the bot framework, uh, the bot registration channel. And there you can just click on, okay, I want my bot to be available on Microsoft Teams, or I want it to have available on Facebook. Facebook has different stories since you also need to go through, um, through some validation on the on Facebook platform itself. Um, interaction, for example, with Twilio also to, to do by a text messaging. Um, via twi Twilio, you can also do WhatsApp and so on, where WhatsApp is still, uh, not everyone get access to it but also interaction with uh, smart speakers like a Google Home or an Alexa. Um, for the ones who still had an, uh, a Cortana speaker, yeah, you could also build things on that. So for example, for an Alexa, then you can say Alexa call uh, bot name, and then uh, it, you can just start communicating with it. Now, well, it's an SDK, so everything needs to be coded. Um, this session is not purely for how to build chatbots exactly, but just to give you an overview of the things that are possible. Um, and, but I'm still going to go into Visual Studio to show um, two small things. Now, one thing is the, in the, the interaction with Lewis. Yeah. Here in my code, you'll see Lewis recognizer and it's a function that you call uh, to see what the intent of what's the how sure Lewis is to to uh, say it's for example booking a flight or it's ordering pizza. So based on what is returned by the result of Lewis, we will get an intent. So in this case, for example, uh, the intent book flights, or in this case, the intent get weather. Based on that, you can send your users to other uh, another dialogue. Now, if we go up, and this is something I find very simple to use and interesting, is you have a message factory. And with the message factory, you just say what you want to send to the user. For example, here is the, the message text, which is, is what can I help you with today. Now, after the message text, we add another message text. But this second one is to give in what the bot can say. So, which means you can build a chatbot that works in web chat, but you can also publish it, for example, on Alexa. And on Alexa, of course, it will not show on an Alexa speaker. Uh, on Alexa, it will not show the text, but it will uh, pronounce it. So just by adding this small item with it, you can also make it distinguish about what you want to say or what you want to type. This is the only part I wanted to show within code, but the power of the power of the bot framework SDK is that you can build any integrations that you would like to do. Um, within Europe, there's a, a, an organization that um, does authentication of uh, IDs, and for example, we well, we, it's an integration we did was that people can log in through a specific app to do a real ident identification uh, based on their ID. So with that way, they could sign uh, contracts or even get documents from the city council. And as a, as a cost, as a, well, 
as the organization who's offering the chatbots, they are 100% sure that that person is, uh, is who he is. But this could be do with, done with any other authentication uh, types also. Uh, any OAuth is perf perfectly possible and harder, uh, different things are also possible. Now, also, if you want to call specific APIs within your organization or you want your chatbot running locally, not on Azure, well, then the Bot Framework SDK is a perfect uh, solution for that, and that's perfectly possible. Then the API just needs to be accessible from outside your network. Let me go back. So we had Bot Framework SDK. Now we have Bot Framework Composer. And this already passed seven, so I can actually say it's now general available. It's not any more public preview. Um, so it, they have a stable edition that uh, just got released. What is the Bot Framework Composer? Well, actually, it's a visual editing canvas. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah, it's also open source. And um, just what, what the Bot Framework SDK was missing was there was not really a way to see how, how the dialogues were formed eh, because everything is in code. And that's what is the composer is fixing. It also adds an, a layer on top to build your Lewis models in a very, in, very easy way. Uh, and because of all those integrations, it's really easy to train also your uh, natural language and also add Q&A Q maker and so onwards. Um, let's just go into a demo because it's always nicer. Just a, a picture of how it looks. But let's go in the composer now. Now, I did a big mistake just before the session, um, I installed the stable release on top of an uh, of a non-stable release, and I guess th I guess that gives some issues. And my demo bot is not really working anymore, and the examples are also not working anymore. But that doesn't mean I cannot show anything. So to start with, um, I'll just I'll still open my demo bot. But we have our different flows here, and so here we have, for example, greeting which will just say, um, welcome at the boring bot, how can I help you? So this was an extension. I wanted to add my Q&A maker within this bot. Now, what you see here is also that I added a second line. Hi, I am the boring bot, what can I help you with? Now, this is called language generation. You could call it, you could say it's not really uh, generating your, 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 the response of your bot but actually just uh, at randomly selecting one. True, I agree with that. But what you could do also is add variables in it. So you could say in the morning that it will greet you with good morning um, or hey, it's nice weather that it already took out some weather data and so on. Now we have another part here, it's called order tunnel. And to add, it's a, it's a trigger that you add. And here we say some trigger phrases. So when does it need to go to this order tunnel part? So in this case, I said when it says I want a tunnel or can I get a tunnel in a specific location? Because here we are configuring uh, our entity. And so this is training or intent in total. And this items is training or entity. So as we discussed in Lewis. So this is a more... Um, text-based way, but still it's within your bot and also that data is saved within uh, your composer. Now, based on that, we can go on. Uh, we can also have an unknown intent, for example, when uh, when users are asking things that are totally nothing have to do with, with what the bot is, should do. Now, if you go back to order tunnel, you can click here on to get to the dialogue. And then we can just add, let the user ask a uh, question uh, where would you like us to drill a tunnel where we set up where the data needs to be saved so we have dialogue pen tunnel location now here you could use for example also user pen 
uh, tunnel location or conversation per tunnel location. What's the difference? Well, if it's on user level, um, then a returning user will always have that data still saved in memory. Um, when it's in a conversation, yeah, then it's as long as you're within the conversation. And in this case, it's only within the, the dialogue. <coughs> if we go to other, let me scroll down. There's some other interesting features, which is, for example, allow interruptions and allow prompt. Now, with allow interruptions, um, it means that when you, for example, here now the case, where would you like us to drill a tunnel? And you say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Then it goes to an other uh, dialogue and says, OK, let's end this, call, this uh, dialogue. Maybe you have another issue. Now, a second one, the always prompt. If we go back to our order tunnel, you notice that I've set up here tunnel location equals Belgium or tunnel location equals Ghent. Ghent is a city in Belgium. Well, if a user asks, I want a tunnel, then it will ask also these questions. Where do you, where would you like us to drill a tunnel? But if a user says, I want to uh, drill a tunnel in Ghent, I, I want a tunnel in Ghent, then it, the bot already knows it's in Ghent and it doesn't need to go on with, uh, with the next step, with that question. From there onwards, you can ask questions, uh, for example, yeah, uh, have full dialogues of how things work. Let me show you an example of also how data can look like. Let me. So this is also the nice thing. You have a full uh, way to test your chatbots. You have an emulator, which is actually an other tool built by Microsoft, also open source. And let's just run it. So this is the card sample bot. I can just say hi. Um, and we just want to show all different visuals that you can show within a chatbot. Okay. Now, what we have here is just a hero card. It's it's you could it's a in JSON that you can define certain things. Um, with buttons, um, just a sign in card. And so you could log in, for example, to your Azure Active Directory. You could add uh, animations just with GIFs, or you can add a video, you can even add audio, um, or this one adaptive card where you can actually format all the way you want it. Well, two specific uh, possibilities. Um, so that's really nice. OK, <clears throat> for example, I will just add here a new step. Um, so this is the items that you can add to the composer. You have a sender response, which is just uh, sending text. Uh, you can ask question, where then it asks what kind of response do you expect. Uh, you could ask for a file, for example, uh, or login. You can add conditions to, to based on the input of the user. You can switch it to another part, as you see here. Uh, you could to have some loops to keep asking certain things. Um, this is a very important one, is your access to external resources, where you actually can uh, call APIs to get data uh, or to send data. So you could use bots as data collection. Um, or to connect to your Q, your uh, Q and A knowledge base, or to connect to a skill. I haven't discussed skills yet. Um, a skill is a you could say a module within a chatbot that you could reuse within other chatbots. Um, so you could have a chatbot for, uh, well, let's say Microsoft, um, and Microsoft might have a team that works on a skill specifically for uh, for their devices. A specific skill around, around Azure, another skill specific for Office 365, and so onwards. <coughs> now, you also have a good overview of all the text that has been set to your chatbot, um, but also what the user can respond. 
publishing has also been uh, made it easy so you can quickly publish it to your uh, Azure environment and also all your settings are nicely saved within a JSON uh, that you can reuse. So if we think now the difference between Bot Framework SDK and Bot Framework Composer, uh, Bot Framework SDK is very flexible, so you can do everything you want. Bot Framework Composer is very nice because it's a layer on top of the SDK, um, but of course you're limited to what is possible in the UI. Um, it's open source, so if you want to add stuff, well, go ahead. You can even use it and add your own uh, company name on it and, and uh, rebrand it to and add certain stuff to it and sell it to your customers. That's all no problem. So it depends on what things you want to do. Um, if you're fine with what the composer has, then yeah, then of which for sure I would say use the composer. Um, things that are not possible, for example, in the composer is uh, having a chatbot in uh, different languages. It's only one language that is possible. But yeah, that might be added in the future in, in new versions. Um, and that's something that is possible within the bot framework SDK. Now, a surprise for me, um, and when was it, Ignite 2019, was the release of Power Virtual Agent. Because actually I was expecting the composer then, um, but no, it was the Power Virtual Agent, another tool to build chatbots. Now, what's the difference? Well, the title says it's all. It's a quick startup and production time. It's code free. And so it's perfect for business or subject matter experts. And there's not really a need for AI expertise or developers. Uh, it's a very easy way to build multi-turn conversations and understand input. And it can also talk back to end systems, backend systems, uh, out of the box by making use of uh, power automate functions and also even authenticate and hand over to an, an another chatbot. Now, it also has built in monitoring so you can see in, uh, where your bot is failing, uh, where you might need to train and let it a little bit extra. We go into a demo of that pre-recorded because other types sometimes it takes a little bit longer to create so we create a new bot uh, we'll just call it demo bot let's give it some time to load all right so we have on the sides we have our menu um, and then we well the first thing we would like to see is of course uh, topics uh, we need to click again okay um, and here we have an overview of some built-in topics already, like greetings, uh, escalations, and so on. So like, let's just try it immediately. We will say good afternoon to the chatbot. And without us doing anything, while well, we have already a chatbot that works. Yeah. I just created the bot from scratch. Now, of course, we want to add some extra stuff in it. So if we go to the built-in lessons topics, <clears throat> we have some trigger phrases. When does that topic need to be called? You know? So in this case, it's about um, when the opening hours of a shop. And then you have, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice. voice. Um, you see all the steps that are be, can be called. So the message, I'm help, happy to help you in the store. And then actually it tells me uh, what the opening hours are. So when I ask this now to the bots, what are the opening what are the store hours? Actually, I even made a writing mistake. It will give me the data, and on the right side, we see which steps have been executed. So if you have a split, depending on the answer, we will see in which flow it went. So, and then we immediately also get some uh, feedback questions that can be asked. Uh, we just want, okay, if we find it a good question, uh, it was a give it a good feedback and you cannot help us with anything else and the conversation is ended that's it so this is very simple by just adding blocks now let's make it a little bit more difficult and add some nlp to it and again we have a topic with a couple of trigger phrases 
we go to the altering canvas and we ask a question. And do you see yourself as a hum home user, gamer, or a business user? And depending on the answer, we will recommend them a specific uh, computer uh, and then ask them to add it into the cart. And then the conversation is ended. So let's also try this out. We reset our bot. And now we say, I want a business laptop. And notice it didn't ask us what kind of uh, user are you? Because you've already said it, that you're a business, you, bus you want a business laptop. So it recognized business and that question is ignored. And you immediately go to the next questions to add it into your cart. And again, it will ask you for uh, your feedback. Now, if you look into entities, we see all the pre-trained entities. In this case, we had a home uh, home user, business user, or gaming, and there we have the usage type. So here we trained it to uh, home, gaming, or business. So it recognized that automatically without any further configuration within the tool. So we save the data in a specific, the, the response uh, in a specific uh, variable that we can use then within our, our conditional filter. So in this case here also we can en enable or disable the skipping the question. So we can also just say, okay, you still need to ask it, although I know the information. But we'll leave it on skip because of, yeah, that's more interesting. Now we have customer satisfaction, uh, just a summary and the session and billing reports. Well, this is a, just a bot that has been created, so we will not have a lot of information. But again, this is all built in, so it's it's really nice to have there. And then publish, well, publishing this bot is not difficult. It's already fully online. It's a software as a service. You can configure your channels. Uh, most of the channels are again possible custom integrations here are not possible and you can also configure authentication so you know exactly who you're talking to uh, configuring this for example with azure ad is quite tricky you really need to fill in the correct details to get it to work but if the power virtual agent doesn't do what you would like to do you could still add the bot framework sdk skills and extend it with more uh, enhanced uh, code Okay, now if we compare again, Bot Framework SDK, the Composer and the Power Virtual Agent. Oh, sorry, the Power Virtual Agent is actually an, okay, just let it run. The Power Virtual Agent is really a tool for business users. Um, it's not built for developers. Uh, as you see, it has certain limitations, but is this quite nice to work with? And uh, with a little training, uh, a business user can build their own chatbot that can do a lot of tasks that might be necessary. There are ways to integrate also, for example, Q&A Maker. I have a blog about that, um, so for sure check that out if you would like to do that. Now, I have promised um, a fourth flavor, so we had chocolate, vanilla and strawberry. Now, just choose whatever you want. I'll choose for uh, Stracciatella, um, and that are Hellbots. Now, Hellbots is a totally different product again. So if you think about the different products, well, we have Bot Framework, SDK, and Composer, because actually they belong to each other. Um, then we have the Power Virtual Agent, which belongs to the Power Tools. And then we have the Hellbots. Now, the Hellbots, of course, as it said itself, is really built for uh, the healthcare industry. And I'll go into a demo of that. Um, That's here. So the healthcare bots can be found 
can be found within the Azure Marketplace. Um, and you just need to add it here to, to your uh, environment. Now my session is, I need to refresh it. Don't give me errors now. Okay, so you could start from scratch, but we will keep it to uh, an existing scenario. We'll open a template and well, yeah, we're talking, we're in the COVID-19 epitome. So Microsoft built it a specific uh, model that can be reused and has been uh, validated by the CDC in the US, but there's also validated uh, models for different other countries. Here in Belgium, for example, uh, with our interview, we had the chance to put this chatbot public in seven different uh, hospitals but then in their own uh, in their own way. So let's say we want to do a COVID-19 assessment, we import, and what happens then is that we get a flow of all the things that are asked. Uh, we have um, questions that can be asked, symptoms, and so onwards. Now, if we save this, we can even run it. And now we get our bot here immediately. Uh, have you recently traveled? Uh, no. Have you been in contact with anyone that is sick? No, and so on. And you see also where in the flow you are with the question. Have you been in contact with someone to have? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, just say no. Yes. Okay, are you experiencing shortness of so it's here in the upper part now? And again, you see now it wants to hand off to uh, a live agent in this case because people it needs to be uh, there's some more detailed questions that need to be asked. If we go back to the service, where is this button now? Okay, exit. We have here a language. We can go to localization and we could and now we see that the chatbot can also be called within different languages. So by calling the chatbot and giving the local ID of the browser, for example, uh, it will respond in German and French and Spanish or whatever language that you would like to add. Um, from this side onwards, you also have integration uh, to have specific data connections. Authentication is again possible to any OAuth that you would like to add. Uh, also on channel level, there's a couple of them uh, by default, um, but also the other ones are available, but they're on request, uh, so you don't see them immediately. So that was a health bot. So I'm not going to compare this one with all the rest because this one is really specific. Now let's talk about money. Um, start with the first one, Bot Framework SDK. Um, it's open source. You can run it locally. So actually, if you don't take into price of your server locally, you could run it for free. If you run it on Azure, well, then you need uh, an app service um, or, if you, or you could run it in a container if you want. So there your price is your app service plan. Um, then you have the different tools like the Q&A maker, uh, Louis, uh, the custom, uh, custom speech, for example, if you want to use. These are all paid per usage, um, except Q&A maker. That again depends on your Azure search that's behind it. Uh, you can again go for a fully free Q&A maker, uh, but it depends also on how many users you have on your chatbot. Mostly the lowest paying one is uh, quite okay for uh, by default chatbots. The Power Virtual Agent has a price, is a fixed monthly price of $1,000 per month and a limit of 2,000 conversations per month. Uh, this means that uh, a conversation is, an, is, is a conversation that has been started or takes longer than uh, 60 minutes. Um, you might say, yeah, that's a lot of money, uh, $1,000 per month, 
but you also need to keep into account that your development cost is much lower. You're not having, for example, uh, consultants who are working on it for you. Um, your business can change it immediately and alter some things, but you're limited to certain items. Pricing of the health bot, I didn't add, I don't know it out of my head, but that you also have a free uh, tire that you can use with that's limited to 3000 messages and you're actually quite fast there. Um, and a message is, can be to the bot, but also to the user. So it might be double or triple of what you expect it to be. So as I said, there's many different ways of building chatbots. I said three flavors, but I added that extra flavor, the help bots to it. Um, again, you can go from totally free to thousands of euros per month based on how many users you have, um, based on what your needs are, based on the integrations that you need to do and so on. So with this, I want to close my uh, my talk. If you have any questions, uh, shout, shout out uh, on my Twitter or in the chat right now. Um, I have a blog post about this topic on my website, datafish.eu. Um, you will see some other interesting blog posts also there. Uh, but I'm still here for any questions if you have. Thank you. Michael, your uh, your microphone is still muted. 